take a look at the markets and we start as usual with uh, East Africa in the Kenya market and the NSE yesterday 238 points up there and on the month it's 5.6 percent up of course there was that very strong run uh, in the first half of January then a lot of profit taking as the market pulled back and now of course people are looking forward on uh, on the positive side to some updates with the earnings uh, season but on the other hand uh, there is still some nervousness about that election so uh, as I say 5.6 percent up on the month but uh, a market that's not moving that much either way at the moment, a bit cautious it would seem. The shilling, uh, a shift uh, there off by 0.06%, uh, started yesterday 87.45 to 87.65 and ended up uh, roughly in the middle there at 87,600 for the shilling. Well, let's go to Kenya now, to Nairobi, where Ted Macharia is waiting for us, uh, investment analyst at AIB Capital. Uh, Ted, good morning to you, and uh, it seems that there's a bit of a contradictory impulse in the market. The, a lot of commentators are talking about a bit of political nervousness. On the other hand, there has been optimism uh, with the reporting season coming up, uh, and uh, a lot of companies have, have actually been doing quite well. Uh, morning to you. Uh, as you've said, there is optimism. Um, we are expecting NDA results from particularly the banking sector and the insurance sector with Barclays and EABL expected next week. In terms of uh, politics and outlook, we read a lot from CBK's actions. They have dropped the central bank rate to 9.5% in a bid to stimulate growth. And we expect, because of implementation of the decentralized governments and the county governments, that growth will be stimulated. And we are all hopeful for a peaceful process, which will mean strong outlook for this year. You mentioned insurance stocks. We could go through a couple of the sectors there. Three of the four losers yesterday were insurance firms, but there is demand for these stocks. So what's happening in that sector in terms of investment on the exchange? Uh, yesterday's trading was dominated by foreign investors who made up about 63% of market activity, and they were making strong buys, particularly on EABL, BAT, the banking sector, and they were selling um, Safaricom. So the insurance sector saw a lot of retail investors who were out to position themselves just ahead of the release of the India results. And that the low demand is what brought down some of those counters, especially Liberty Insurance and uh, Britam Insurance. And then uh, East African breweries, it's a share we do talk about a lot. Uh, that was a 12-month high that it reached yesterday. And again, it's that anticipation of numbers. We've commented before on perhaps uh, there could be more transparency in the reporting uh, of updates. So optimism and pessimism when the results are due uh, can sway the market quite a lot. But there does seem to be interest in that share given that the uh, reporting season is about to start. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, they will officially release their half-year results till December 2012 on February 15th, and we will be reading a lot of the numbers. So far, the holding company, DRJO, has reported uh, a dip in profits in terms of sales of both uh, beer and spirits. So we won't be very optimistic about the growth. We don't expect a double-digit growth, but strong growth nonetheless. Uh, at AIB Capital, we have the opinion that the counter is moderately overvalued. It breached uh, 306 yesterday to close at 307. And uh, it's strong foreign demand that has been pushing the counter to those highs. Always interesting, those brewery shares. We were talking earlier about SAB Miller's acquisition in uh, China, which we're going to talk about earlier. Uh, it's, a, it's a share that people can relate to. And they, those companies, if well run, have proved to be very good investments. Let's talk about property. And a lot of analysts uh, do look at property when there's economic growth uh, for indicators. And uh, often we only talk about the capital. We talk about Nairobi or the capital of whatever country it is. But Nakuru, real estate investors holding back investments due to uncertainty. But... The analysts predict that property prices will continue rising after March. Is that a broad view? And uh, what opportunities are there for investors in the real estate uh, sector? Um, there is still high demand for property, especially property that will serve uh, the middle to the low income earners. Uh, we've seen housing finance try and uh, penetrate that market space. And we read a lot into 
what insurance firms are doing and the establishment of real estate investment trusts to cater for this strong demand. So in the short to medium term, obviously we expect slowed down investment, particularly from the private sector, as we wait to see what's going to happen on the other sides of the election. But in the long term, the demand is still there, the supply is lacking, and so there's a lot of space for property developers. And now, in particular, as um, decentralization is implemented, we will see counties coming up, and demand for proper housing in those counties will also rise. So outside Nairobi, we should also see strong demand. Apparently, United Nations said in 2011 that Nakuru was uh, the fourth fastest growing town in Africa. That must bring its own problems as well, uh, and uh, some s speculation perhaps by investors. Yes, it does. Nakuru is uh, the rugby capital of Kenya, and uh, there's a lot of holiday activity particularly, and sports activity, recreational activity going on there. So developers will obviously be flocking there. But we expect demand to pick up in all counties. We've seen Nairobi, uh, the, the Upper Hill area and Westlands area has become very prime property for businesses, with insurance firms looking to build uh, office blocks in those areas. And as decentralization continues, we will see Nyeri, we will see Nakuru picking up demand. So we expect demand to keep the way it is.